field <laughs> where anything goes. It's kind of fun. <laughs> It's organic and it's textural and it's um, gritty and natural and East LA-ish. It's a very different look at LA than uh, has been done before. What I do is, which sounds awful, it's consequential, it's not that, but it's, it's supportive. Um, it's, it's not a show about design. It's a show about production. We do sort of stay away from other, um, other pop shows, definitely. Even, I think, in the initial decision to make the permanent set, the space in which they live, um, was very conscious that it not look like a police station and that it be West Coast, that it feels like L.A. The church was a very interesting choice for a police station. It's a working Baptist church, and it's, I think, it's on 16th or 17th Street, somewhere central and 17th, kind of no man's land. And they had a main church and then added on to it. If you look at it, it's the most bizarre looking kind of Spanish, Dutch, added on to freakish looking building. And what it was that Sean particularly fell in love with, um, and I think actually Scott liked the location first, but the thing that was was the floor. If you were to look down from where we are here, the, it's a, a black and red floor, and it was like a, um, a chessboard. It was an interesting experience, I mean, to go and um, actually meet the people in the church and see what the history of the church was. And um, it kind of gave me a lot of ideas in, um, in the adding the, the other pieces on, you know, what the history would have been, how did it develop, and why, why can you see through all these big, you know, glass windows into the church. We actually rented some pews from them that they had had, you know, that we used around. You see it in the, we um, lock up the suspects on the pews, which having gone to Catholic school is pretty funny. <laughs> they very much ignored that it was a church in the pilot. What they liked was the bullpen area. After the pilot, I came in to interview to do the series. I hadn't done the pilot and um, said, you know, if we're going to stay with the church, why don't you make it? A church. Why don't we go with it being a church? Because it's so interesting that these guys, you know, that whole play. And I think that they originally, you know, of course, had thought of that themselves, but they thought maybe it's too on, you know, it's like a hammer on the head. But now they have a series to play it out over. You know, they could do it a little more slowly. Oh Jesus Christ! God damn it! I mean, we greatly reduced the size of the church from what in reality is the church. This is almost more the size of what would have to be a chapel. It, you know, in relation to this other space that's attached to it. What's similar to the location is that we actually, and very different than most sets, is that it is a two-story solid set. Most shows do not build first and second story contiguously. You know, you would have the first story of the house sitting next to the second story of the house, and they'll have a staircase that they disappear on or whatever. And um, it was very important to the whole naturalistic, fast-moving quality of the show that you could be chasing them in these real spaces, you could chase them up the steps, you know, that you can run from one space down, and it, so we had to build it that way, and it was a lot of fun. Over here to my left is where the captain is, and then diagonally across the floor downstairs is where Vic is, so they can come out together and be, you know, have these confrontations on this floor, which was very important to Sean because they're, you know, the players against each other with the chess board in the background. The captain's office is a warm, not, not so much because he is warm, but more so because for the tension that's in that space, which is a different color than exists anywhere else in the set. The most important thing about the captain's office really is, uh, is its view, you know, its position in the, in the whole set. Um, he has his own staircase. It's not that he's his own staircase. Everybody uses that staircase, but there's the main one in the church, and then there's this little one that comes back up to where he is. He can see all of the goings on he can you know throughout the church also if he was to come out onto this balcony which he often does he sort of stands there like the patron or something and looks down over and surveys all that is beneath him after you come down from uh, the captain's office right beneath it is the kitchen which was another actually is my favorite part of the set it's just it's a it's a really good looking little space and the windows are are interesting that you can see in and out of i just i like when you stand in there and look through those windows you get a really good view of the set and there's a lot of activity in that space. The clubhouse is, is this bizarre little sort of pentagram shape um, that you actually physically see the um, pilasters and stuff from the walls that had been knocked out. And you'll see the old plaster and this paneling all together in the same space which really came from a practical decision, but then started to also work well, and it, the strongest conflict lies in that space. One of the things that people really like, because you see so many directors coming in and out, is that they can go from inside to outside. You know, bring the cops from the street, through the gate, 
you know, into the car, come in with them, walk and walk all the way into the clubhouse or walk all the way into the city captain is really nice. I am a painter. I mean, that's what I come from. The paint is what is, I contribute the most, I think, to this show because that's what we can do. We also did all the walls very shiny, you know, which is, is something that's different than uh, most shows do. Just that reflection, which is another disorienting quality and has something to do with L.A. and the heat of the sun. The first time I saw dailies, I thought, oh my God, the walls look like plastic. They were a little bit too shiny. So you have to go back and kind of wax them and play with the texture of them. You'll see the texture changes between, you know, old plaster and wood, and then there's metal storefront that was installed. Um, and we did that deliberately to look like, okay, this is what they've put in now. They put in this bulletproof glass, and they put in a little area where the desk sergeant is secure so that you can uh, bring the perpetrators in. And we were pretty um, also adamant about making none of those look like the typical booking area would look. This is a clear division between what is the city is doing to the church and um, what the church was before. And the most important thing in the church is the cage, really. So we just made the church large enough to sustain the cage. And the church was to look very much like this, you know, this church had been, was a working church for many years, you know, modified. They never had much money, so you could see that it was falling apart. Also, if you went back to the main area, right after you come in and you can turn to your right and go into where the cage is, there's the, a staircase that would have originally been up to where the choir or something was in the back. Would have been in the real church. The organ room is the interrogation room, the first interrogation room, which is why it's got such a bizarre little shape. There's no two-way glass, none of that kind of traditional being able to see in to where um, interrogation is, that everything's on a monitor, which is very cool. And they can switch back and forth between interrogation room one and interrogation room two. And that's also supposed to look like they have very little money, which they do, so you know, different size monitors and you know one that works better than the other does because they have crappy equipment. And that two different interrogation rooms also have two different personalities because in the pilot there was only one and they felt that they would you know, need to later on to do that interplay between them. So we did sort of a men's room and a women's room in essence, or a harder and a softer. One is green and um, has a linoleum floor and has a much harder kind of feeling. And the other one is has the same wooden detailing that's in the rest of the church and has like a, a salmon-y pink color and a carpeted floor. We have a lot of deliberate irregularities in the floor. Um, just because it's supposed to look old and feel old. And so much so that we actually, we had tiles removed, and then we had to go back and fill where the tiles were removed with sort of something clear that you still got the feeling that the tile was gone, but the, the actor stopped tripping over the fact that the tile was gone. <laughs> this show should look like you just happened upon them somewhere, so they could be against against a flat wall that you would never do at another time. But we put them there instead because it has to always feel like you didn't have the time to go to a spot that tells the story. Now will you hear? It has to have an um, an accidental sort of feeling, and um, it, it works because the acting is so good too. You screwed me! I didn't, I didn't screw you. It's so much more natural and so much more unseen, and, and ugly is good. <laughs> you know, like this, sometimes you see a building and think, do I love it? Do I hate it? Oh, that's perfect. Because it's, it feels like the shoe.